uh, Mr. Sojian Namazalev, uh, founder of Central Asian Free Market Institute. Hi, uh, very happy to speak uh, here. And uh, I'll be speaking about Central Asia, and particularly about Kyrgyzstan. But first, I want to give some short information. What is Central Asia? What is Kyrgyzstan? And uh, what is the situation there so that we could understand the barriers and then uh, to seek for opportunities there. So um, in the global maps, Central Asia is located in the heart of Eurasian continent. And uh, it is surrounded, uh, bordered with very interesting countries like Russia, China, Afghanistan, Iran, and uh, Caspian Sea. So very interesting countries inside the Central Asian region, uh, the traditional five stands, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. If you see like Turkmenistan, which is uh, on the left side, this is almost an analog of North Korea in Central Asia, which is closed, which is very totalitarian. People don't have any kind of freedom for expression, and etc. No opposition in there. Uzbekistan is five times better than Turkmenistan, but five times worse than Belarus, probably. Um, <coughs> Kazakhstan is five times better than Uzbekistan, but five times worse than something else. Uh, but still, the country, the regions, uh, countries are very interesting. Uh, if we take um, all of these countries are rich for natural resources, except Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, but the average GDP, uh, for example, is very small. I will, I will show all of this and then we'll talk about uh, barriers and possibilities. Um, so Kyrgyzstan is, is, this arrow is showing over there. Um, Central Asia has a population of 61 million uh, people. It's becoming more and more. Uh, for example, if we take Kazakhstan, is one of the uh, richest countries for mineral resources. This is the 11th largest uh, proven reserves of oil and natural gas, second largest for uranium, cranium, um, third largest for manganese re reserves, fifth largest for copper reserves, and top ten for coal, iron, and gold. Um, from this you could say that, oh, this should be a very rich country, and we'll see what the country is. Uh, Turkmenistan possesses the world's fourth largest reserves of natural gas and oil resources, Uzbekistan is the world's seventh largest gold producer. It produces 80 tons per year and holds the fourth largest reserves in the world. Uh, Tajikistan has great hydropower potential, and uh, this is like a potential still, uh, and some uh, deposits of gold, silver, and antimony. And Kyrgyzstan has also some gold. Uh, Comptor deposits, for example, is gold mining. Uh, it is the seventh largest gold deposit in the world, uh, with an estimated value of five, more than five billion dollars, so, and uh, some other mineral resources. But uh, what does it mean? Uh, the region is very rich for mineral resources, but very poor for, uh, how to say, for the people who are rich in knowledge and uh, rich for freedom ideas. And, uh, here. Uh, for example, nominal GDP uh, for the region is 166 billion, and uh, GDP per capita is like almost three thousand dollars for for the region, which has so much uh, mineral resources. Uh, one of the key reasons is uh, the common Slavic story, and these four uh, beautiful guys had a big influence on the region: uh, Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Stalin. And I will show you the current analog uh, of these people are these four. Uh, Nazarbayev, president of Kazakhstan, who is still in governing the country since, not even since the collapse of the Soviet Union. He was governing even before. Uh, yes, Emmanuel Rahmon, president of Tajikistan, is also still governing, but they had some, this is after the uh, independence. Uh, Islam Karimov, uh, who murders so many people and the opposition are out, the, out of the country, and the guy, Gurban Gulubi, Berda Muhammadov, uh, who is another dictator, uh, self-loved uh, 
the guy who builds everything there after the previous dictator of the country. So these four people are like they belong to dictators club of Central Asia, but they always have uh, some people from Russia, so uh, they have more like uh, to influence Kyrgyzstan. Uh, here is our president uh, who governs already almost like two and a half years, two years, but she's leaving within a month uh, because we are having another elections. Uh, but uh, it's very hard, for example, if we want to build a democracy in the country which is landlocked, surrounded by uh, authoritarian governments um, and even Russia with whom we don't bo uh, border is also very close and wherever we look we see Russia as well. Um, and uh, if, I, I will tell about that. For example, whenever, when we uh, entered WTO, our borders were closed. Uh, when we had our revolutions, our borders were closed uh, for Kazakhstan, for Uzbekistan, for example. So uh, the protectionism in, in the region, which is the key uh, barrier, uh, obstacle for growth uh, and for freedom, uh, high taxes and regulation, if we if we take the global uh, measure, we are not in the middle even. Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan are in the middle of the ranking, but uh, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, for example, are very far. They are closer to uh, very poor countries. And I will, I will show, uh, this is for construction permits, protecting investors, uh, enforcing contracts. So uh, the, the worst is, of course, uh, everywhere, <coughs> Uzbekistan, then Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan. And here, corruption. Corruption index. So Somalia, which I, I think is the late, is the last country on corruption, is very close to Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Kazakhstan. We are, at, we are all, we all are all coming after 140th. So that means we are very good in corruption as well. And Denmark is almost zero. So, if you, if you like corruption, come to that region. Um, but, uh, there are some very interesting trends, and uh, possibly mostly going on in Kyrgyzstan, which is, uh, for the last like, 20 years, uh, considered as the, an island for freedom, island for democracy, but we still had uh, great problems. We had uh, toppled down, overthrow two presidents who ran away from the country. One went to Russia to be closer to Putin, and uh, another one went to Belarus to be closer to another dictator. So what happened in the country? Uh, we, we have had a referendum last year. 90% voted yes. This is a parliamentary republic. Uh, power from the president was taken away and given to parliament. Five parties out of 27 participated in the election. They were they entered the parliament, and three parties are in power. Revolutionary party, who was a uh, key organizer of the revolution, became an opposition because uh, after the revolution they got less uh, votes. This this also uh, contributes to the thought that elections were somehow clear and that there's a political competition. Secret services are uh, destroying themselves. One of the deputy chairmen left and said that, uh, for example, these secret services became an, a tool for authoritarianism. Uh, there is a precedent uh, of punishment for political crimes, so if, if there would be a lot of punishments for political crimes, then people would think before they act. Uh, to do something, so 17 officials and law uh, enforcement officials are arrested for involvement in the assassination policy in the reign of the former president. And um, a work, 15-year work of one of our co-founders who is sitting right here, Emil Mutalib, who was championing for visa-free regime, for free trade, for lower taxes, uh, is being somehow realized, the current minister, uh, announced that starting from the beginning of 2012 we'll have a uh, visa-free regime for 57 countries and uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan probably is the country where, for example, Georgian reforms are discussed the most. Like nowhere in other countries except Georgia discuss the same way as in Kyrgyzstan probably because we want reforms and actually we want to move towards what the Republic of Georgia 
on the terms of economic reforms did. Um, yeah, just a few points, for example, when our colleague friend Emil was the Minister of Economic Development, quotes were abolished and uh, uh, bad policies were, um, how to say, had a protest against. But uh, we still have problems because uh, Russia, Kazakhstan and uh, Belarus created the Customs Union, which is, for, for our opinion, is very protectionistic. Um, and we, we have a fear of this Customs Union uh, and the, the closed borders are reason of it and uh, if we would join it our import tariffs would go up and uh, probably the poor people would not effort to buy something although right now everything is cheap and uh, Russians and Kazakhs used to come to Kyrgyzstan to buy some uh, dresses or products. Uh, right now for example <coughs> Kazakh-Kyrgyz border is partially open, Uzbek-Kyrgyz border is closed, uh, Chinese-Kyrgyz uh, border is open, it was open even during the revolution, it was great, um, and uh, Tajikistan-Kyrgyzstan border are open. Uh, and uh, regretfully right now, you know, lateral uh, free trade initiative is not very popular in the country, uh, because uh, everybody is talking about the customs union, about the possibility of joining that. And if we join, of course, there would be no chance. And uh, it would be only in fairy tales uh, to think about in a later free trade initiative. So, um, thank you very much for listening. And uh, I hope I could explain and I could tell you what is happening in the region and about this uh, controversial trends. And, uh, it's very hard to say that for example, the country is moving on the one way, right way, because everything is happening at the same time, and we need to work hard. And uh, that's, that's the reason why Central Asian Free Market Institute is built, and thanks to Atlas Economic Research Foundation and Friedrich Naumann Foundation who are helping to promote liberal democracy, free markets, rule of law in Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, and Tajikistan. Thank you.